Speck from uh, Berks County. Good morning, Matt. Um, first of all, I just want to say uh, on a personal note, um, I've only known you for a few years, and I think that you've acted most professionally. Uh, I think that between you and I, we've handled problems, we've handled ideas, and uh, I think I think the, I congratulate you on retiring, but uh, I think you're going to be missed. And the person that fills your position is going to have a, a big job to do because you're walking away with knowledge that most people don't have. So that, that's the first comment. Um, I had three or four issues I'd like to bring up. Um, concerning the rough grouse, uh, and I talk to people that hunt grouse, and I know that uh, there's discussion now on closing one of the seasons to cut back on the harvesting of the grouse. Um, is that going to be statewide? Because I'm under the impression that north of Route 80, the rough grouse are pretty, are pretty good yet. So I'm just kind of curious where you're at with that. The proposal that passed through the commission in January was to close the season. It's the after Christmas season, uh, which is the late winter season, which is very popular for grouse hunters. Um, but it was to close that. Um, the research that Lisa Williams has done has shown that the birds that survive that long, uh, there's a, a good belief that they have built up antibodies and resistance to West Nile virus. And those are the ones that if they've lived that long, they're gonna to survive to reproduce. So although we don't believe that uh, hunting really takes that many birds, but every one that it takes will affect uh, the future population of grouse. So by closing that late winter season, we're, we're hoping that we can bring the grouse back. Would, is that gonna be a permanent closure? Is that a couple years or what, what's the intent? Hopefully it would not be a permanent situation. You know, as soon as we could get the, uh, the grouse to recover, we would again go back to opening that season. So your, your next meeting is in March, where you're going to discuss this and make it effective or not effective? Correct. It would be final adoption at the uh, end of March at the commission meeting. Okay. Now, the second thing I want to talk to you about is the license fees. Um, last year, uh, the, the, uh, the 1166 bill, there was a lot of opposition to giving uh, full authority to set the fees. And I put in a, an amendment to set fees. Mm -hmm. And where are we with that today? I mean, I, I've contacted a couple of you guys to ask you, look this fee chart over, because I'm under the impression that the full authority bill is coming back. But if it doesn't work, I still think you got, you, the commission needs increases. And I've asked for you, for you and uh, your staff to come up with numbers, if, see if my numbers were okay or not. Uh, you need an increase, there's no doubt about it. And the sportsmen that I talk to are okay with an increase. So I think we just got to figure out how much of an increase and how many licenses. So, I mean, where, where are we with that? Uh, have you guys looked my, th my request over? We have looked at the numbers. Um, we had a numbers, it was Senate Bill 1148, which was actually before 1166, that was a straight fee increase. What we are trying to prevent doing is complicating the issue. And then we have people that um, support one or the other, and it just gets to be, you know, the last time we did this, you know, the uh, 1148 came out, then 1166, and we had people that they weren't sure what they were supporting or what they were in opposition to. So we were trying to keep that straight, see how uh, we now Senate Bill 192, how that starts to move through the system, uh, which would be ideal for us. But you're exactly right, Representative Joswiak, we do need an increase. Um, and if we can't get that authority to set the, our own fees, we, would, we definitely would welcome uh, a straight license fee increase. Well, do you want me to put an amendment in on that bill or, or what? What do you um, need to do here? I, I think separate Chairman bill. Gillespie and Chairman Barbin are working on that and probably at this point, we should just let things ride uh, till we see what's going on, am I correct? Well, I guess, I guess the danger in that would be if it doesn't fly, you got to start with a new bill. Right. I'll, I'll talk to you. We can talk later, okay? The, the other question I had then is uh, you get your fee increases. I, I'm not happy that we're closing pheasant farms. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of pheasant hunting in my area and all over the state. So if you get these fee increases, would that bring the pheasant farms back? No. We don't. What we have looked at in... What we were proposing to do is we were trying to make our operation more efficient. Uh, we had four pheasant farms 
Um, a lot of staff there, uh, which is required most of the season. Uh, during, after the last in-season releases would be in December, we still maintained that staff on four pheasant farms and they had a very small number of birds there uh, as breeders. So we had all that staff there basically working and it, and it just, the personnel cost, uh, benefits were just basically killing us. Uh, what we had planned to do is to work to make two of those farms more efficient. Um, and we didn't want, we wanted to do that over a two year period to make those farms so that we could raise just as many birds on two farms as we did on four farms. Uh, but the problem happened, you know, when we didn't get the fee increase, we were forced to do it, so we didn't have time to do the infrastructure that's necessary on the two farms that we're keeping to get back up to those numbers this year. We are working on that to bring those numbers back up, but it's not gonna happen by uh, the fall of 2017. So, so the intent then is to keep 250,000 birds uh, produced in two farms versus four farms. Our goal, our goal for the last five years has been about 200,000 birds per year, and we've always exceeded that goal. Again, our goal will be 200,000 pheasants being released. Okay, thank you. Um, one other question, uh, chronic waste disease. As you know, we were out at the elk in Benazette, and we saw the elk out there, and one of the uh, uh, the CWD areas is right against the elk uh, area. Correct. So, uh, I mean, I, that's, a, that's a serious issue for the elk. Uh, how, what are we doing to, to prevent that, or can we do anything? Well, yeah, well, we can, and we're trying. But one thing you, that is good is that, that uh, it's disease management area number three, which borders up against uh, the elk management areas. Uh, those were in a captive situation in a captive farm. We have not detected that in the wild deer population at that point in disease management area number three. So, that's so, only, so far, that's a good thing. Yeah, it's only the deer farms. And that, that, that got here through what, the feed, you think, you're thinking? Or? Chronic wasting disease through feed? Um, really not sure, probably there's, there's different ways that we believe that CWD got introduced into Pennsylvania. Uh, probably came in in the back of a truck either through a, a live deer that was moving from one captive servant farm to another captive servant farm, or a deer that was harvested in another state and brought into Pennsylvania. Uh, but it, we don't believe that it came in here naturally, that it, unless they came up from Maryland, which is now an issue, because they're right on, of course, right across the line in Maryland, and they can come right across. Okay, well, th thanks very much for all your comments, and uh, you can be very proud of all your accomplishments as the a member of the Game Commission and the Executive Director. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chairman.